I'm from the Forest of Dean, so it's been part of my family. Rugby's been a massive part of our family for like the whole time growing up. Rob Kane trying to find some players, a little chip from the scrum half hasn't worked out for the USA and Natasha Hunt is onto it like a flash. When I was young I just absolutely loved all sports so it wasn't necessarily rugby it's like anything I could get my hands on I'd always be like nagging my dad to be out in the garden kicking a ball around with me and, and stuff like that like I was never one of these girls that loved to go and play like My Little Pony or anything like that I was always had a ball in my hand. Mum used to joke that when we were allowed to go on Cottrell's bus at the time, like into Gloucester, which was our biggest local city. I'd always come back like from being out with friends for the day, I'd come back with a different ball, whether it was like a rugby ball or a bouncy ball or anything, and it was a bit of a standing joke in my family, yeah. Netball was always my main sport until I was about 17, and I used to train like three, four times a week. Had an England trial and didn't, I wasn't that successful in it, and kind of, was all right at all of the testing stuff, but then obviously it was always going back to my height, which was quite demoralising for me at the time. And I was like, oh, I just want to change, I like, want to try something new. Um, and yeah, so took up rugby. My old PE teacher said, come and have a go. Obviously I had experience of it when I was growing up as well and just kind of got fast-tracked a little bit through the system and didn't look back. Hey, your granddad as well played a, a big part in your rugby career. What, yeah. what kind of role did, did he have on, on shaping the player you are now? Oh, massive. So he was like, uh, I've been told like a bit of a legend at, at the time that he was playing and, and he like would play all across the backs. And I remember going down to the local rugby club for him, which was Cinderford Bridge, and the pitch is literally slanted like this. And he used to teach me how to kick there. So him and my dad and me, I think my sisters would come randomly. And we used to go down like probably once a week, once every other week and just kick at post. And he'd teach me how to do that. Yeah, that was pretty special. I actually kicked at post last weekend and, and he was just in my head the whole time, like takes you back to where you were and, and being able to do that. My grandma loves to knit. Um, she doesn't really like get rugby. So obviously she supported my granddad like all the time and stuff and but she doesn't really understand the rules and she'll just sit there with, like with a with a um, I don't even know what they're called needles with her needles and she'll just knit and um she's knitted the girls like jumpers so like Skaz has had a jumper like I've had a cardio jumper my family has and when I was in the under 20s she used to knit us these hats so like they started off as mo hats because my family like rocked up to one of the first under 20 games with this like blue red and white striped hat with mo on which was like really cute, but also like a little bit embarrassing. I was like, oh God, but then the girls like lapped it up, like they absolutely loved it. And then pretty much our whole squad ended up with a hat with their own name on. Um, so it was really, really special. And my dad still wears it now sometimes when he, if it's cold, when he comes to watch me play, he wears the Moha, which is just epic. She has like little stickers that go in what she knits, which says, um, hand knitted with love from Barbara Wright, which is just the cutest. Hunt going blind side. Reed getting it out, Miller Mills is in the action and they're queuing up to score and it is scrum half Natasha Hunt who goes over for England's third try. You've won Six Nations, you've won Grand Slams, you've been to Olympics, you've won a World Cup obviously and you played a big part in the final, particularly the, the winning try and what, what stands out for you when you look back? I think um, my roommate at the time, Kay Wilson, she was just one of the most chilled people I've ever met. So like we woke up in the morning and we were like chanting like, let's go win a World Cup and stuff like this. Like just, we just stayed like so relaxed all day. And I think a large part of that comes down to her. I think if you know me as a person, you know that I'm like, I'm quite uptight about stuff. I get like, like I like to be busy. It just comes from my family. Like my grandma and mum are crazy busy all the time. And like to have someone like her there that was just kind of like, dragging me back down to earth, just making the whole day fun was amazing and it all just felt right, like there wasn't a lot of stress, there wasn't a lot of anxiety, um, it was just kind of like right this is our time and let's just go and take it and I think that was huge for us, that was massive. Emily Skirt is going to go all the way! So does it feel kind of surreal I guess looking back on that time because you know you are Natasha Hunt World Cup winner, it's, it must be a great feeling. Yeah, it's a bit crazy, like, I like, if you know me again, like, I don't really like to shout about any of that, so to come back and for people to, like, love it like they did. Kerry Large, we're both from Dry, well, we both played at Drybrook, her family's huge within the club at Drybrook Rugby Club. We grew up together, she's one of my sister's best mates, and we went to a World Cup and we won it together, like, and we're literally from three, me three minutes away um, in the forest, which is, like, a re really remote place, and... I think that was huge. We actually got the gym at Drive at Rugby Club named after us. <laughs> so it's now called the Natasha Hunt and Kerry Large Gymnasium. 
which was just epic and they had like this massive homecoming for us and loads of people turned up, like we took our medals, we cut the ribbon for the gym and just stuff like that. It was just insane that that was now a thing and like, it's, yeah, it's, it's quality. Like, hopefully we inspired a lot more people to take up the game, which I think we did, so nice class. And finally, got to talk about the scrunchie. Talk us through it. The scrunchie. Scrunchies. Um, yeah, so now rocking a Gloucester Hartbury scrunchie, which um, Daisy sorted us out with, which is class, love it. It basically started in the sevens, um, loads of the girls were wearing them. And obviously it's a bit of a, seen as like a bit of a younger thing. And the girls were like, oh, you need to put it in. And joked about the fact that I was wearing a blue scrunchie and it was bringing out my eyes. And then the older girls, like when I came back to 15, so like Sunter, Katie, people like that were just absolutely rinsing me. Like, what are you doing? You need to take that out, it's not okay. And because they were saying stuff like this, I was like, I'm gonna wear it even more now. So then it became a bit of a thing. Like I was always joking about the fact it would bring out my eyes. That was why I was wearing it. And um, now I just love them. I feel like it knocks a few years off me. So I'm like, I'm embracing it fully. <laughs>